is Friday, June 3rd, 2011. Gang of Four set to take on the big stories of the day. Uh, we have the uh, empty Diane Cibrian chair over here, if you can get a shot of that, Taylor. <coughs> uh, not that Diane Cibrian is supposed to be on today's show, but we've, we've now named the empty chair in the studio <laughs> after her, because that's that's so often been the reason for it being empty. It's like the uh, but uh, we, we are told that our fourth uh, gangster is uh, on her way. All right. From where? <laughs> Nevada. All right, on the gang today that we know of so far, he is a state representative uh, who will soon have the summer off, get this legislative session wrapped up. Lyle Larson, good morning to you. Good morning, Jack. And uh, how are you feeling? You, you feel like a kid who's just about to finish school? Or? It, it was. Uh, I was excited for the session to, uh, to come to an end, and then the governor made a decision right. that uh, to have a special session, but everybody thought it was going to be in July. Uh, but I think there's some political ambition there that played a role to expedite no. the process. Oh, you think? Yeah. I, I Governor's think in a little bit of a hurry? The governor, lieutenant governor, and some other folks, they're ready to play musical chairs, and I think that's what we're dealing with. So we're going to expedite dealing with some of the issues. Uh, primarily, educational funding is, is the big issue that we're trying to uh, grapple with. All right, Lyle Larson, state rep here on Gang of Four today. Uh, Nico LaHood was uh, a candidate uh, for Bear County DA last year and uh, is back to his private law practice. And uh, Nico, good to see you on Gang of Thank Four. You, What's Jack. new with you? Just same old thing, working, being a daddy, yeah. same old thing. How are the kids? They're great. They yeah. got great. Are Brilliant. you feeling any political itch? It's a very political time. Are you getting the feeling <laughs> like maybe I want to get back in? Or? I definitely have always said this. I definitely have. I want to serve in some yeah. capacity at some point. But right now, the only itch I get is running after my kids and yeah. working at the law practice. And so you're biding your time. I'm biding my time. You're waiting. Basically. You'll know it when you see it. That's right. All right. No rush. And uh, hopefully Sylvia Rincon is on her way, and we'll be here on Gang of Four very soon. And we can't wait to hear from her. By the way, did you guys hear Jack Kevorkian died? <clears throat> oh, I didn't. Yeah. I just read that yesterday. Doctor Death. And they were trying to figure out how, right? Uh, well, you know, uh, apparently just uh, from being old. Oh. He was uh, 83, and uh, he'd been in the hospital, and uh, apparently this was an unassisted. Oh, oh, yeah. uh, oh will we ever know? I mean, <laughs> can't, really, you can't ever really yeah. say. But, uh, <laughs> sure. Did he take some of his own medicine? I don't, uh, I don't know. What do you think of this guy? Yeah, that was... Uh, I think that what he was trying to do, uh, in, in a lot of people are in a lot of pain, and uh, they're in a hospice situation, uh, and the family's asking him, they're asking him for assistance uh, to accelerate the inevitable. Uh, I really think that his convictions were strong. He was just a, he, he was a, he was a quirky individual, and there wasn't a lot of credibility when he sat down and talked to him about uh, about how and, and why he did the things that he, he did. He seemed to have kind of a zeal for his work, which seemed out of place. You know, if you're an, if you're an orthodontist, you should be enthusiastic about straight teeth. But I don't know. This guy seemed very enthusiastic, Nico, about death. Yeah, well, he wasn't an official. He's a big fan of it. It wasn't an official profession, so I don't know why he had so much zeal about it, but no. I don't know what his heart meant, was like, so. Yeah, See, euthanasia. Kind of ghoulish. Yeah, euthanasia for the elderly, I don't think will be ever be acceptable in, in any society. Remember he had that van? Yeah. And he would take people out into that van. That's how he came to prominence. I, well, that's right. That, it was like a mobile uh, death device, and and because uh, you know there were people in various parts of the country that wanted his help, he'd take him out to the park in the driveway and take him out to the van. Yeah, it's a little too much. And uh, yeah. it's just kind of like you know the vans are rocking. <laughs> yeah, it was don't like, come and knock it. Yeah. <laughs> Sylvia Rincon is here from Fox San Antonio. Just dead. Fresh off the big story, you were probably working around to the last minute, I'll bet, right? Oh well, yeah, for I sure. We did. Uh, we were to Spring Branch for the uh, this morning, yeah. Mr. Uh, Sergeant Van's mm -hmm. funeral. Uh, Yami Beat had switched out with me. They'll be oh, staying there nice. for the. Okay. You know, it is nice because you know, it's a long day. This is a long day. Well, we appreciate you being here, uh, even though you are late. Do you have a note? Well, when Jack Bacardi calls, do you have a note? I come running. Okay, bring you a know, note from your news director. Oh, you gotta stay. It's, 
Sit. You, and you I'm here. You didn't really come Sit. running. You kind of came walking. <laughs> I see it. Now, you didn't see the car when I was running through the door. And I'm like, right. open the door, open the door. That's her car on the lawn. I was listening to you station. on the way over here, and I heard Lyle, and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What does that mean? Seconds? I've got seconds. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. We stretched as long as we could. We were dancing as fast as we could. Thank How are you, you doing? You doing all right? I'm doing well. I'm doing fantastic. Uh, everything good at Fox? You guys are oh my cleaning gosh. up in the ratings. I know that. <laughs> we are doing very well on ratings. Thank goodness. But more than that, you know, we're in the midst of our HD uh, transition finally okay. and conversion. And uh, we're also getting a brand new set. I mean, it looks like NASA over there. I mean, everything is, it's like we went from, you know, pre-K. Because, you know, prior, what's before pre-K? Head Start? We were in Head Start for a long time. And now, you know, we were in kindergarten, upgrading slowly. And now we're, we are in, like, grad school. All right. It's, you know. We are there. So you got to change your makeup for HD. You know, what I, makeup? I this woman doesn't wear any makeup. Natural, Lyle. Yeah. Oh, I know. I'm not oh, her, but everybody me. else on well, the set. No, I'm looking. I'm looking to see. Because that's the thing, is that for sports, you know, to see those sweaty athletes out there in the field, it's kind of cool. A sweaty reporter, not so cool. <laughs> Well, be honest. Be honest. Perspiration, Sylvia. So <laughs> Jack sticks to radio. Uh, you got that right. There's no high def here. The lower the def, the better. Hey, does anybody? I mean, for once, our country has come together. There is unity in our country. Is there anyone? I don't care how partisanly political you are. Is there anyone that believes Anthony Weiner? I mean, anyone? Okay, can you ask for a better name? That's no a great name. Yeah, for real. For this right? situation. It's like a yeah. mad magazine story. But I mean, That's Nico, no. d d even his own party is like, nope, we're not coming. We're coming, not answering the it bell. Is, it, doesn't, it doesn't pass the smell test. It's, it, somebody said, Lyle, this is like a clinic in everything not to do in a political Oh, statement. yeah. I, I think you're supposed to, if there was uh, any truth uh, to it at all, he should have admitted to it and the story would have been behind us. Right. But For because sure. he refuses uh, to uh, admit that he did something inappropriate, and maybe it's for salvation of his marriage or for his, his, his political ambitions to be mayor of New York City or whatever it is, I think that uh, he's, he's making all the classic mistakes in, in politics, and, and, and I think it's his ego. If you if you've watched him over the last couple of years, yeah, he is uh, he, he's very animated in in his in his beliefs, uh, political beliefs, and he and he attacks people viciously. And I think it's turned on him a little bit, and he can't take it. And uh, you know, so it's it's unfortunate. But I I feel for. Uh, his wife and for his family and uh, for the folks that that he was tweeting, I am not a tweeter of uh, of, <laughs> of his. I can tell you, Anthony You're Rainer not is not. Him? No, I don't follow him, I and I want to allow him to follow me. Yeah, <laughs> but it is curious about. I always uh, chalk uh, responses like this to sort of an immaturity in, I guess, the political or 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 just you know media world but you guys have you know been on that other side of things I and mean, you guys haven't been you know that controversial yeah, or clear, anything clarify that, please. <laughs> please, please. but i wonder you know how would you guys handle something like that and and at what point does someone say let me a cover-up never works you know or even trying to just deny it, whatever it never really up, works then we probably wouldn't have this situation as <laughs> right, it was so there know, was no cover-up there was no cover-up they yeah, should have made that I decision what, i don't know what advisors he has but that's bad advice because he's actually changed his story it went from it was hacked to it might have been a prank Stop falling in a hole. You got to stop digging. He's digging deeper and deeper, and that's the the situation that uh, we're in now. The best thing you can do is just said I did something inappropriate, uh, and I apologize to anybody that uh, that I hurt. And I think that that uh, we're moving away from the story. But as long as he sticks in the position he's in, that uh, he's going to cover it up in any way he can. Uh, he's he's going to be in the predicament that he's stuck himself into. Yeah. And Nico, the, the uh, behavior of someone who feels they've been the victim of a cybercrime would not would normally be to, uh, to the bottom call the authorities Absolutely. and I want I demand an investigation. Look, I'm a member of Congress. If somebody is impersonating me, that could even be a national security uh, mm -hmm. issue. Sure. Um, to, to say I, I'm not going to waste the taxpayer's yeah. money. By the way, he did call the police uh. Uh, last night. They called the police because a CBS reporter from New York <laughs> I uh, kept going to his office trying to get an interview, and they they had the police what? throw her out. Wait so, a so that's that's the problem, apparently. You would think you're 
I think natural common sense dictates that he should be leading the charge right. to want to find out, number one, who's getting into his account and who's impersonating him, and then who's embarrassing him, impugning his name. I mean, this hurts his reputation, his goodwill. So I would want to get to the bottom of it and not even salvage it if he's innocent. Maybe it was uh, the, the same culprit on the O.J. deal. You know, O.J.'s been seeking until he was thrown in jail. There's, I think that the same process is in place right now where he's blamed somebody, but that, that phantom person won't ever be found. Or is it really a phantom person, or do we really know what's going on here? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Right? Well, exactly. Well, he should, just, he, should, he should close everyone. He should just shut everybody up by having a press conference and... Showing his underwear and show that he doesn't But I guess the underwear. real question here is oh, can Lord, you recover? I'll be, <laughs> I'll be TiVoing that. Yeah. Yeah. Can, you, can, you, can you recover from something like this? I guess that's yeah. a big question. And, you know, that's kind of scary, I think, if you can. Oh, you. You know? <laughs> he can wife, really spin it, it around. His wife, uh, apparently, she works for Hillary Clinton and she's. Yeah. Uh, so part of the brain trust uh, of the State Department, and it's, yeah. it's got to be embarrassment to her that, you know, that he's doing all of this. She's probably already advised him, you need to step out, you need to admit it, and let's let's move on. But uh, he's, I think he's insistent, and a lot of it's ego-driven. The funny part is he was always screaming for media attention. You could see him on the, the talk shows, yeah. so it would be Fox or CNN or all the rest of them, and he would just blast Bush and blast uh, the Republican establishment, you know, for all all of uh, the issues he had brought them and now he's he's getting the NBC reporter thrown out by the police yeah, that's, that's a, quite a irony. contradiction yeah, absolutely we're back with more gang of four on a Friday morning you can you can uh, hang with the gang at 599 5555 or get a vote in on the JR poll question we head into the newsroom at 1021 for Karen and the news is downright